Hey friend, in this tutorial, we are going to be painting the loose wet on wet element or layer for dahlias. So I cover a lot of flowers here on this channel. This is my favorite subject to paint is flowers. I grew up in a garden. My mom is a major green thumb. And so I grew up around a lot of flowers. So the subject that I love to paint a lot is these loose style flowers. And I don't paint here on this channel tons dahlias. We do a lot of roses, we do a lot of peonies, etc. And so dahlias are our main focus today and we're doing the wet on wet technique element of painting dahlias using the size 12 filbert brush, this Bloom's brush from Princeton, um, to create that spiky, really fun, fluffy dahlia look. So if you've never painted dahlias before or if you need to refine your techniques with painting watercolor dahlias, then let's dive in. All right, so now that we have our sketch all done, we know the composition of our piece, we understand the structure of dahlias and how where our petals should be placed, and we also have our color palette mixed up, it's time to now put all of this onto paper with our paintbrush. I am using a size 12 filbert brush. This is the Blooms brush by Princeton. It's my favorite uh, brush for flowers. If you're struggling, if you have this brush and you're struggling with how to use it, I have a video that goes into detail about how to use this brush, so make sure to check that out. Um, but basically, all you're gonna do to paint dahlias is you're gonna start with an uneven or misshapen ball first. So I'm gonna start with this flower. I like to start more of in the middle of my shape for my composition, like right here or right here versus on the ends of my shape. I don't really know why, but I think it just helps with building the fluffiness towards the middle and then tapering that off on the ends. It just feels more flowy. So I'm gonna start with around here, the, these flowers, and basically kind of just eyeball what my thumbnail sketch looks like. I have it over here for reference. Just kind of eyeballing where I place the the flowers on my thumbnail sketch and for starters on these cafe au lait dahlias because they're such a pale color i'm painting a very very light kind of tea value of my first part of the dahlia which is just this round ball shape which is again where all of your petals are going to point back to so start very light and very wet everything in this tutorial is going to be done wet and wet so I'm starting wet with this uneven circle or oval shape. And then once I have that ball shape down, I'll grab my slightly darker color. I'm just gonna get rid of some excess water. And I'll start to pull the outsides of the flower. I'll start to pull out using the corner of the filbert brush. So not flat like this, but using the corner of the filbert brush and just kind of plop around that ball shape with these spikes or petals. Sometimes I'll use the flat part of the brush just so not every petal is looking super uniform. Maybe I'll go in with a little touch of yellow or yellow ochre and mix it in with that color that I just put down and just add in some contrast with my color. Plopping and making sure every petal is pointing back to that ball because that's again what we discussed in the previous tutorials this month So that's a nice shape Just keep going in with slight little blobs to accentuate some of those individual petals, but I love to leave that light spot in the center of that flower to make it feel like it's getting hit by light. And then we have another little flower over here, kind of in the corner. It doesn't need to be literally an exact replica of your sketch, um, just, just using it as reference to make sure that you're liking the flow of everything. So then I'll come down, maybe add a little bit of purple to this one. Same thing, but a little bit smaller with my ball shape first. And I want this color to be a lot darker and a little bit more of a moody color, so we're just gonna 
go in and make it more of a small, almost like a bud type flower. Just scooping the corner of my brush in to give it that kind of long, wide petal shape that's falling off the center there. And all of that little, those thin little gaps of white space are really important for showing those individual layers of petals. So you don't want it to be necessarily all over the place, like these up in here in this ball area, I keep pretty tight. But then as I start to fan around that ball shape, I like to give it these little thin gaps of white space. And sometimes the white space is only a little separation at the bottom, sometimes it's bigger. And then while that's still wet, I'm liking how that's drying, but we need a little bit of contrast. So I'm gonna add some black and dragon's blood to accentuate just a couple areas on this flower where we could start to show that curve around this shape. So now that this corner is taking shape, I am actually gonna make this guy a little bit bigger and going off the page because I don't want it to be so straight across. I want it to kind of flow up, so I'm gonna because this is still wet, I can just make this a bigger ball. Don't be afraid to literally do that. And um, we'll go in with a thicker, darker version of that color or maybe a little bit more pink and just start to bring out those individual petals again. And make sure all of your petals are pointing back to that center ball in the middle. So I'm rotating my brush as I rotate around that circle. green gold down in here just to have a different contrast against this flower but just have fun with this stage this stage is very loose very watery maybe some bright orange too just to separate some of these petals a bit more Then here, I want to lift some of this color happening in the middle. So I'm drying and cleaning off my brush in between each little lift. You can also use a dry clean brush to lift off some color on top of individual petals to carve out those petals, making sure you're pointing back to the center every time, like so. some deep reddish brown to grab that like concentrated center vibe in there and just add this accent color here and there on this flower while it's still a little bit wet. I'll do a light, I want this to be a really blushy color, so a lot more pink in this one. And it'll be more of a bud over here. Or actually we'll do one that's pointing up to this corner, so I'll start with my ball shape. And then we'll take the corner of the brush and just point it in back to the base of this bowl shape and then some contrast little tops of petals using the flat part of the brush
that one there. Now I'm just gonna take water on my brush, no pigment, and I'm gonna put in my bud here. I want it to feel really pale and subtle. So I'm gonna start with the flat part of the brush and it's pointing down this way. So the, the end or tip of this brush is the top of my petal. And I'll just put in a little oval shape with my silver brush and then another one. just go in and add a contrast. Soak some of that up and blend it in a little bit better with this clean, mostly dry brush. And then I'm going to go in and add, because I love when these bleed, these little sepal leaves bleed into the flower. I'm gonna add in those leaves in a variety of different values. So I wanna make sure that some are lighter than others. And we'll have that stem coming in here. So I'm using the top edge of the brush for my stems. going to go all the way to this flower with this stem yet because I might want to put a leaf there or something like I don't want to just block that off just yet and I'll start to bring in this bluish gray color to weave it down into the shape here for another flower. And while this is drying, before we move down there, let's add in a little more contrast to this one. Maybe we'll just add all of the contrast to one side of the flower. Maybe just some brown thrown in there. Like so from this flower. Now we're going to do a very, very pale, more cafe au lait color flower down in here. So I'll start with my fall shape, again referencing my thumbnail sketch for the position of these flowers, but not doing it so precisely because I want to be in the moment a little bit too. So I've got my fall that I'm painting with mostly just water. Then I'll drop in my subtle blushy color, pink and brown and a little bit of yellow. Lots of water, rinse off that color and make sure to get rid of excess water on your paper towel. And just drop in that color subtly. you don't like how it's blooming or spreading just grab a clean mostly dry brush and lift it off so I'll go in between my color and carve out little streaks to show individual petals so like right here there's a large concentration of this brownish pink color so I'll just go in and skip every other section to lift some color to show that individual petal look and maybe go back in between again with some darker color to 
accentuate those darker spots where I just lifted around. While this is wet, I want to grab my bluish green color, smoky blue green color. A lot of these colors are mixed on the spot. I don't pre mix and have big batches of color, but if that's how you prefer to work, definitely do that. Um, I like to do it more on the spot. I've been pretty comfortable with color mixing, but it's also just for the sake of going with the flow. Sometimes you'll change direction for things. And it's a little easier to do that if you're not so precise and methodical beforehand. So just painting some leaf shapes around this flower. I like to start light with my stem color and leaf color usually first, and then I can always build color on top. We'll add some blue green right here. And keeping it really loose and washy and maybe having a stem here so I'll have my final flower down in here. Pointing this way so we've got our ball shape first. spikes around the ball shape. some gap between to show the contrast. Maybe even down in here to accentuate the fluffiness in the center too. Grabbing some yellow to mix that in too, just a little bit. And then we'll have stem going off there. And now we'll weave in some of our green gold color. of plopping around with the corner of my brush. Accentuating the curve of the piece with my stems and leaves. And in the next tutorial next week, we'll be adding some darker details once this all dries to really accentuate some of those curves in the petals and on top of the leaves to add a lot of contrast. So I don't want to overdo this stage too.
too much, but it is important to add your leaves while everything is still wet. Because some of these blooms happening with the greens and the pinks are where all the magic happens. That's like my favorite part of watercolor, so we want to make sure that that happens. Incorporating this little leaf a little bit better. So you definitely want to do that and not overdo this part with all of the all the stems and leaves. So maybe this is where the bush starts or the flower elements start and then it weaves in. Okay, so now we're just gonna wait for this to dry and next week I am gonna show you how to add some wet on dry details to this to make this really feel awesome and pop forward. Thanks so much for watching that tutorial on wet on wet dahlias. Next week we're gonna be finishing up this piece using wet on dry technique to create some more pop and contrast in this piece, um, pulling out individual petals and it just adds the perfect chef's kiss on top of this loose style floral piece. So stay tuned for next week. And if you wanna paint more flowers or you wanna get a better grasp in between now and then on your watercolor techniques, make, make sure you check out my free video here on this YouTube channel called The Complete Beginner's Guide to Watercolor. It's basically a two hour free workshop on watercolor. It also, we also have it in a PDF version for free too. I'll link to both of those below. And also if you need more of a video component that walks you A through Z of all the techniques and steps that you need to learn to paint many different types of subjects from lobster and jellyfish to flowers and landscapes, and birds, then make sure you check out my online course called the Everyday Watercolor Companion Course where I'm compiling all of my best tutorials and techniques for watercolor for specific subjects that I've never covered anywhere else and they go in tandem with all three of my books, Everyday Watercolor books. So make sure you check out that course, it's under 100 bucks and it's really gonna give you a very in-depth grasp on how to use watercolor as a medium. Very, very good course. Um, but I will see you in next week's video. We're gonna finish up this Dahlia painting.